what is going on everybody in this video we're going to create a simple calculator program using what we've learned with enhanced switches this is meant to be more of a practice project let's get started the first thing we'll need is a scanner we will create a scanner object scanner scanner equals new scanner within the set of parentheses type system dot in and then when you open a scanner it is a good idea to close it when you're done with it scanner.close then be sure to import the class at the top of your java file make sure you have this import import java.util.scanner what are the different variables we'll need a user is going to type in two numbers and an operator such as a plus for addition minus for subtraction so on and so forth the first variable will be of the double data type double num1 double num2 then an operator this will be a char char operator and a result double result there's going to be one more variable but we'll fill that in later so we'll stick with these four for now we'll prompt a user to type in the first number followed by an operator then the second number here's how we can write that let's ask the user to enter the first number and I will use print instead of print line we will assign num1 equal to use our scanner to get user input next double then we need the operator we will use a print statement enter an operator we'll have plus for addition minus for subtraction an asterisk for multiplication a forward slash for division let's add one more let's add a caret this will raise a base to a given power feel free to add more if you would like but we'll just stick with these five a user is going to enter in a character one of these operators hopefully we will assign our variable of operator equal to scanner dot next the next method will give you a string we can method chain the char at method to return a single character when a user types in something just give me the first character this will also convert it to be a character rather than keep it a string so ideally our operator is going to be a plus a minus an asterisk a forward slash or a caret then we need num2 we can just copy these two lines paste them change first to be second and num1 to be num2 we have our two numbers and our operator we have to determine what the operator is we can use an enhanced switch for that we will create a switch within the set of parentheses we are examining our operator we're examining our operator against any matching cases the first case will be a plus sign and these cases are going to be within single quotes not double quotes because we're working with a character not a string with our switch if our operator is a plus character we're going to write an arrow meaning do this we will take our variable of result set it equal to be num1 that's the first number plus num2 that will be the case for addition then we have subtraction case minus arrow do this assign our result equal to num1 minus num2 multiplication would be case a character of asterisk arrow take our result equals num1 times num2 now for division we have a forward slash arrow take our result equals num1 divided by num2 now with division if somebody divides by zero we'll return to this case later and make it a little more sophisticated where we check to see if num2 is zero I would like for us to get a solid foundation first for this program 
So if somebody would like to raise a base to a given power, we will use the caret. We will assign our result equal to, now we're going to use the math class, the power method of the math class. We can raise a base to a given power. We will raise num1 to the power of num2. Let's perform a test run just to be sure that it works. I'm going to display our result after the switch. So Java is giving us a warning that variable result might not have been initialized. That's because it's possible there's no matching cases and we would be keeping our result uninitialized. So to clear that up, when we declare our variable, we can also assign it. I'll just set it to be zero. Let's perform a test run. Enter the first number, let's do 3.14. Enter an operator, let's do addition. And the second number, 1.1. The result is 4.24. Let's do subtraction, 3.14 minus 1.1, which gives us 2.04. Multiplication, 3.14 times, let's do 2, 6.28. Then division, 3.14 divided by 2. That gives us 1.57. Then we have power. What is 3 to the power of 3? That is 27. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. 3 to the power of 3. We have one potential issue though. What if somebody divides by zero? Here's what happens. What is 3.14 divided by zero? We get the output of infinity. Here's how we could prevent that. Underneath the case where we do division, we'll write a few lines rather than just one, but we're going to enclose them within a set of curly braces. Then I'm going to cut this line of code. Within this case, we'll write an if statement. We'll check if num2 is equal to zero. That's because we can't normally divide by zero. If it is, then let's print cannot divide by zero. Else, we'll assign our result of num1 divided by num2. We'll execute the else statement if num2 doesn't equal 0. Because if it did, this would be true, and we execute this code instead. Let's try that again. What is 3.14 divided by 0? Cannot divide by 0. However, we still do display a result and that is by using this print statement. What if somebody types in an operator that doesn't exist? 3.14, I'm gonna type in pizza for the operator. Type in, I don't know, one. Well, we still display a result. So let's modify this program. Let's display a result only if we have a valid operator, because right now we don't. Pizza is not a valid operator. Let's add a Boolean variable of valid operation. I will set this to be true from the beginning. If somebody attempts to divide by zero, I'm going to take our valid operation variable and set it to be false because we do not want to continue and display the result. We're going to add a default case. The default case will be the following. So I'm going to write two lines of code for the default case. Let's output invalid operator. Then we will take our Boolean variable of valid operation and set it to be false. So this is what our switch looks like. Feel free to pause the video if you would like a moment to look it over. Within our case of division, we do have a few lines of code. 
Same thing applies with the default case. We're only going to print the result if our Boolean of valid operation is true. If valid operation is equal to true, but really we can just shorten this to if valid operation. Then we'll print the result. Then we don't necessarily need an else statement because we're already printing either invalid operator or cannot divide by zero. Okay, let's run this one final time. 3.14 plus 2.1 is 5.24. 3.14 minus 1.1 is 2.04. 3.14 times 2.1 is 6.594. 3.14. Okay, 3.14 divided by 0. Let's see what happens. Cannot divide by 0. And we do not display the result because our equation is invalid, which is good. We don't want to display the result. We're displaying a type of error message instead. Let's raise 4 to the power of 2, which gives us 16. Now let's type in an operator that doesn't exist. 3.14 pizza 69. Invalid operator. That's because pizza is not a valid operator. All right, everybody, that is a calculator program that you can write. The purpose of this program is to more or less help us with enhanced switch statements. Depending on the operator, we can perform one of a few operations. We've also learned that your cases can take up more than one line if you would like. And well, everybody, that is a calculator program in Java.